Andy and Jay with Two Dudes Reviews. Today we're here with Ryan from Mellow Fellow, the famous chef Clint Jolly. Famous in Fernley. Famous in Fernley <laughs> and Carson City, yeah. right? <laughs> Two small counties. <laughs> Two small counties. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of beers. We're at the Mellow Fellow for a bottle share. Is that what this event is called? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hit the road bottle share. I think. Hit the road bottle share. And tell us a little bit about what, uh, what the purpose of the event is. Yeah, so purpose of the event um, was to get some beers from out of market into Reno that don't normally come here. Uh, there's a lot of guys making great beer not very far from here. Weird laws as it relates to buying and selling beer. So as a bar owner, both in California and in Nevada, very tricky to get some of the good stuff you can have over the hill back to this side. So uh, our goal was to, one, if anybody else was out and about on their travels, grab something interesting, bring it back, share it with the group. Uh, and then ourselves, we did the same thing. Took a road trip this weekend down to Auburn, Sacramento, El Dorado Hills, and uh, hit a few of the nice breweries that uh, we're not able to get over here. And since we can't technically sell the beer, we're just giving it away. Wow. <laughs> hey, what a Free deal. beer. What a deal. <laughs> exactly. well, kind, of, kind of giving it away. You're kind supposed to, it's a share, so you're supposed to bring something and then take something. Right. You know, but, yeah. Well, and there, you, you, can, you can pay, and all you can drink, and all you can eat is at the event tonight. Yeah, so, the, uh, so really, you can drink. Either way, no money required for that. You know, again, intent is to share. So if you're going to bring something, take something. But anybody who wants to come can also partake. Uh, but then from the food perspective, if you're hungry, we've got an all-you-can-eat barbecue tonight where we're doing turkey, ribs, uh, tri-tip, and uh, sausages. sausages. Mac exactly. and cheese. Wow. And then with uh, all the sides, sauce, uh, mac and cheese, baked beans, coleslaw, cornbread. Wow. Okay. And by the nice. way, this guy's like six foot eight, weighs about three twenty, and he knows how to cook, man. He's, <laughs> he's, okay, he's I'm not, not that big, but jeez. He's not three twenty. He's, no. he's, he's, no. he's actually <laughs> sure. relatively trim and fit well, thanks. for as much food because you're such a great chef. You know how to cook everything, Clint. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> I, you know, I, I could not be a culinary genius because I'm gluttonous, man. When I get into something I dig, I'm like, mmm, it's you just go for it. Jay, right. I know because Jade comes to my house to eat. Yeah, so much. anyway, today we're going to try a couple of beers, though. This is Outrigger from Moonraker Brewing Company. Now, you were talking about a really interesting part about these guys is they don't, like, distribute the beer. Did I hear you correctly? Not a lot, right? So if you're going to get these guys from distribution perspective, one, you have to be in the state of California. And two, you have to deal directly with the brewery. They're not going to have a distributor at this point, so not widely available. Uh, but they make such good beer that people go to the brewery and they'll buy just about everything they make. Wow. Um, so therein lies why we went down to get it. Sick. And you know it's classy when they take a generic tin can and slap a, <laughs> exactly. yeah. slap a label on it and here we go. That's this right here. And so well, this I feel is like if they're selling a ton of it with a label like that, then the beer has to be good, <laughs> right? Exactly. Not on, absolutely. Not Who cares? Well, let's, let's give this a taste. Yeah. Thank you for oh, sharing, cheers. gentlemen. Absolutely. There's a real cheers. big citrus nose on this, almost mm -hmm. a sweet citrus nose like, on that. I don't know what you're catching. Ruby red maybe. grapefruit? Maybe a little ruby red grapefruit, yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. That's a, oh. But it's not, it's not so hoppy and dry that it just sucks all the, all the moisture and flavor out of your mm -hmm. mouth, right? It's got a little bit of malt backbone to it, I think, that lends some sweetness there. Yeah, and this one, interestingly for these guys, you know, if you look at the clarity of this one, you can see through it, right? Yeah. So Absolutely. not very cloudy. It's definitely filtered. Um, you know, Moonraker has made their name on kind of making the East Coast, Northeast style, hazy IPAs. This is more of a West Coast style, but still extremely well done. And those hot profiles come through significantly. So all those citrusy notes that you're tasting, there's no citrus added to the beer. That's just the flavor that they're getting out of the house. And that's out of that hop. Now, what is the hop profile? Do you know? I don't know exactly on this one. Okay. Does it say on the can? It doesn't say much on the can. It says it? there's 16 ounces in here, Andy. Well, oh, <laughs> wait. That helps. And it measures and 7% percent alcohol, alcohol, right? <laughs> Sweet. Isn't that all you really need to know about the beer? Oh, and it's bad for you. Here's the government warning that says this beer is bad for you. If you're pregnant, you I, not consume it. I beer. look okay. more pregnant. The more reviews we do. Hey, so All I right. gotta ask why the uh, there's there seems to be a general backlash against IPA. IPA was like, is it just because it was so big for so long, the trend of you know the hipsters or whatever you want to call it, going out and exploring and checking out new IPAs? Is that what's driving this? Because I, st I don't buy the hype. I, I never bought the BS about the IPAs being the biggest thing. It was my personal favorite. And I don't believe the hype and the BS about, oh, it's a crappy IPA. Well, I mean, you know, I'll say just from personal reference, you know, at all the bars that, that we have, you know, IPAs account for half of our sales, yeah. even though we have 40 taps. So while we might have 8 to 10 IPAs on, that's half the beer sales out of only a quarter of our real estate up there. So, wow. you know, they still definitely do sell better than most beers. 
Um, you know, they're also getting a little more dynamic. I mean, I think you saw there was kind of the phase where everybody started putting fruit in their IPAs with the grapefruit sculpt and kind of started it. And those things were great when they came out. And then over time, everybody just said, oh, well, this add fruit to my IPA and it becomes a different beer. And so I right. think, you know, that trend maybe has passed a little bit. I don't really see a big downtick in the IPAs in general, although, you know, I would say they're seasonal. So, you know, certainly in the summer, spring, warm weather, people are going to gravitate towards those more, but it's not a huge drop off, you know, even though a lot of people in the winter might move to something darker. I think sure. as you're talking about hipster stuff, <laughs> you know, um, you know, certainly kind of the, the new hipper thing might be, you know, sour beers. You know, I think yeah. that, you know, when we five years ago and we opened our first place, you know, we might have had one or two sours on and you tried to get people to drink them, but it wasn't, you know, a, a commonly uh, a, a taste, a, a common taste for folks. But now I think we have eight or nine sours on here today um, and people just seem to love those. So, you know, palates change, tastes change, and I think, you know, you evolve with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned those IPAs have changed too because I think when you're talking about millennials, when yeah. craft beer scene kind of started blowing up, at least in our region, Reno, Tahoe, you had uh, Great Basin, you had Sierra Nevada making these big, super hot, heavy pale ales or IPAs. Um, I, so I think people just related craft beer to an IPA and, hey, I yeah. want to drink a craft beer, an IPA must be a craft beer. Right. But the yeah. IPAs, I think, in my opinion, have changed and gotten way better yeah. over the last 10 years. I agree. There, um, there's a certain thing with an IPA that a lot of them um, doesn't appeal to me because of an earwaxy acidness to it. That a nicer IPA has a How often do you eat earwax? To to, uh, that, uh, it, uh, <laughs> he is Jay. You have to realize you're dealing with Jay. Your, your earwax, earwax <laughs> or mine? So, no, well, you're I, talking but, about balance, though, too, right? Because yeah, there you, you, go. Know, you can sit there and you can load your IPA up with hops and put no real significant malt in there, and you're just going to have a really bitter, dry you know, kind of IPA. And so it depends. And some people and, still like them. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's, there's something for everyone within the category, which I think is interesting and probably why they're popular. Sure. And when you look at the, um, you know, the different, different regions, I mean, if you go to the Midwest, you're going to find a more balanced IPA. You know, even Colorado, look at Avery IPA. You know, that's, it's not overly hoppy. It's got nice flavor, you know, but there's definitely a malt backbone to kind of hold the beer up. You know, some of the Northeast styles, they're not filtering them, you know, which is what we'll taste next. Yeah, and so, you know, they're a little bit hazier and you get some of those residual hop, you know, more of that flavor that comes through and it creates a juiciness and a richness to the IPA that, that isn't there if you filter. So and there's that, some that, that juiciness, I think, is, again, when you taste that, and that's, that's a really good descriptor, I think, of this beer. This Juicy. beer's got a juiciness to it. Uh, it kind of leaves just, you salivating. After oh my gosh! Beer. Yeah, I yeah. just took a drink yeah. of it, and then and you said juicy, and I'm thinking, God, yeah, my I'm, my mouth is watering, right? Mm -hmm. Which yeah. makes you want to drink more. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little more refreshing than when they're just super bitter. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Okay, well let's move on. The Here next we've one. Got the uh, it's uh, the felt field work field work field work field work field work brewing. Um, again, I assume from uh, the Auburn area, yeah? Uh, so the brewery is actually down in uh, Berkeley, Berkeley, San Francisco area. Yep. And then they've just opened a series, or at least one in a series of tap rooms where you can go and, and get their beer retail. So this is actually from their Sacramento uh, tap room where they you know, deliver and distribute there. So same kind of deal. For the most part, you need to actually go there to pick up the beer. Um, they do have a few accounts, you know, in their local areas that they'll you know, distribute kegs to, but again, you know, they, they have such a high demand for their beer that they sell most of it themselves, right. and people are willing to make the trip to go get it. Well, now, this is called Sploosh. And which I'm, is I'm glad there's kind of G in there. Like, yeah. I don't want to say something. This <laughs> <might> <laughs> have a, We're glad it doesn't say Sploosh, right? It. But it's a wet hop double IPA, and I see here they did say Citra wet hops, so it's wet hop with Citra, Citra hops, which... The name says citrus, and I'm going to assume we're going to get a lot of citrus notes to this. But what constitutes a double IPA versus a single IPA? So a double IPA, you're going to have, you know, much higher gravity. So this is weighing in at 8.8%. You know, single IPAs are usually, you know, up to 7, 7.5. Okay. Um, you know, depends on how you brew it, you know, too. But uh, for the most part, you're going to have uh, a little more sweetness, a little more alcohol, um, which kind of go hand in hand. Sure. All right. All right well, let's give this some, a try. Uh, some sweet, almost yeah. maybe a green apple. Off the nose, green apple, or even mm. grape. Maybe. That citra, that citra hop comes right through on the nose. I feel like Sploosh is an appropriate name the way that feels when it gets in your mouth there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly earwax. Right, but, it, <laughs> but, it, but it covers your whole palate, right? It's one of those things where as soon as you drink it, it kind of fills your whole tongue I have and no your idea, whole, you know. That's what my wife tells me. Right. <laughs> And this is why you're still married. <laughs> Hi, Allison. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, the, the unfiltered, right, obviously. Um, and that's, that's different, too, because I know as a brewer, 
we're all we all will try and get our beer as clear as we can, right? right? You want clear beer. That's the been the marker of a quality beer for ever, and uh, now it's not, <laughs> right? I mean, I think. I well, think, that's, I think back and that's to that, the conversation. But back to that mouthfeel thing. I think on a double IPA over single, you always get that more heavy. Not heavy necessarily, but like you said, covers your palate. Yep. And it right. coats and it kind of lingers a little bit more. And I think, um, I'm not positive, but I think that's because there's a little more particulates and stuff that are sticking around. Sure, makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yep, yep, and especially in the unfiltered ones, I think. Right. Um, very good. I, I don't know what I like better. Uh, this one is crisper and cleaner, obviously. Yeah. And then this one's got that, that uh, I wouldn't say a bigger malt backbone, though. It's, it's, uh, it's not as sweet. In, it, it's sweet in a different way, in my opinion. And the, the hops are a little bit heavier, right? A little bit more piney, a little bit yep. stronger in your face. Yeah. Well, there's almost a little bit of a grainy texture left, mm -hmm. you know, in your mouth when you're done. And, you know, that's those little and, particulates, and I right? I didn't know quite how to describe it. I was almost going to say a, uh, it's not tannins, but it's almost like tan like the, uh, the, the, the sour. Yeah, how you would feel. With kind of, you can kind of feel them clenching up a little bit with, uh, with, a, with a double here. Yeah, and I mean, as far as, I mean, for the folks who are, you know, looking on camera here, I mean, it's definitely hazier yeah. than this yeah, when you one. Look them side yeah, by side. if you put them side by side. Sure. But as far as hazy IPAs go, they can be a lot hazier than this. Sure. You know, yeah. and I think that's the conversation now that's happening is, like, how far is too far? Yeah. You know, just like when you started throwing fruit in beer, it's like, well, okay, so we were going to put some fruit in here, but should, then we put fruit and vanilla, and should we barrel age, and should we, you know. Sure. So it's just kind of like, okay, beer. when like is enough punch. enough? Yeah. And so, you know, you see some of these things that look like milkshakes, and in fact, you know, there's been some folks who make milkshake IPAs, like their name, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I feel like this is another one of those things where we'll see how far it goes. Um, so far, people enjoy them. So at the end of the day, if the market wants it, provide it. So you know, I, as, as a brewer, it's a whole lot less work. You don't have to clarify it. It's easy. <laughs> it's right? Saves you a little money on your filtration system. Heck yeah, you can buy a, a cheaper filtration system for the, <laughs> for the hazy towel. IPA. <laughs> See, that's how I would do it, though. We'd show up to a contest and be, God, God it's kind of hazy. Let's call it a hazy IPA. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's a total Jape thing. He would yeah. say that. He would do that, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Making Absolutely. our own category. Lazy's my middle name. Yeah. Uh, okay, the million dollar question. And I know this is kind of like, especially for you being a, 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 a wise beer swami here. Um, I don't know about that. What but. is, who do you think, out of all the IPAs you've tried in a lifetime, who would you say, I like asking a chef what your favorite food is, right. who does the best IPA? What is the best IPA on the planet? If you had a hundred bucks tried. and it was, <laughs> cost is not an object, you got any IPA, what would it be? So for me, my personal favorite over the years has been Alpine Nelson, the original. When Alpine was brewing it at their brewery, it was almost a little bit unfiltered like this, heavy on the Nelson hops, and that's just flavor profile-wise for me, hop-wise, Nelson's my favorite. So right, that's Brian, what kind of doing it for me. See if you can find the graphic for the uh, Alpine <laughs> Nelson. Yeah. Alpine Nelson. Well, here's, well, here's, some, here's good news for anybody who does like that beer is uh, – Green Flash just bought a ton of Nelson hops, so they're going to start having that, I think, on a year-round basis in May next year. So for folks who have been looking for it, it's been real hard to get. Um, you know, that's there too. But, you know, again, I think it really depends on your hop profile. As you talk, you know, this one's dry hop with Citra. You know, if you were to use, you know, El Dorado hops or if you were to use Mosaic or you were to use Nelson, I mean, it changes the profile entirely. So I think that's the neat thing about the IPA side is that you can use the same type of ingredient in a hop, but... By using different hops, you're going to get different flavors, whether it's peppery, citrusy, you know, etc. And taste is a really subjective question. Exactly. Of course, without a doubt. You might think is great, you might think is ratness. Exactly right. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, again, thank you so much for, yeah, for sharing that. sharing your knowledge, experience, the beer. We're yeah. looking forward to seeing some of the rest of uh, the event this evening and uh, spending a little more time here drinking some more beers. Like Clint said, ordering the Uber now. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And then, um, and then we'll probably go live or do some more, some more stuff. So throughout the evening, I think we, uh, we might want to bring some people in and, and, and get their opinion on what we've done. And uh, that'll I think right, a, right now it's kind of early, and there's still 40 or 50 beers up there to try. So cool. it's going to be a long night. We'll, 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 if you make us, we'll try a couple. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, until we'll twist you you'll twist it? Okay, yeah. but don't kick me with that boot. Oh, dude, the, boot, <laughs> the boot's bad. Hey, I'm Jay. If he's Andy, we are Two Dudes Reviews. <laughs>